friends if you're new here I'm Daniel my wife and I live full-time on our converted cargo trailer today I want to talk to you about five reasons why we decided to go with a cargo trailer over an RV and reason number one is customizability we spent a lot of time looking at different floor plans from different RV manufacturers and we were having a really really hard time finding something that fit how we needed to live and use the space and if you think about it, that's not too surprising. RVs are meant to be used for a weekend, maybe a week or two long trip, mostly at RV parks where you hook everything up. You have your electric, your water, your sewer, um, and maybe a couple days off grid boondocking like we are right now, um, but nothing more than that. We needed to be able to live in it full time and we needed a desk uh, space so that we could work and we needed space for our bikes and to be able to cycle and we weren't really finding an RV out there that already had that type of floor plan built and that's kind of where we started looking at an empty shell and a cargo trailer it comes as an empty shell so you're really only limited by three things your imagination your skill with building and your budget um, with those three things, you can design whatever floor plan you want to design within reason. Another consideration for us was going green. And I know not everyone is all for going green, but hear me out here. We knew we didn't want to be staying at RV parks. We wanted to, to boondock. And it's very challenging to boondock and um, use fossil fuels and not use a composting toilet. You're gonna to go through a crap ton of water and a crap ton of electricity and a crap ton of propane to generate that electricity. Um, and so that wasn't really feasible for us to take the systems that are in place in an RV already, your propane hot water heater, your propane uh, that runs the fridge and uh, your propane heater for the air and to redo all those systems you end up with you know vent holes in the rv for these things and you no longer have it you gotta patch that vent hole um, so for us it wasn't really feasible based on the layouts uh, that we were seeing out there to get what we desired and this leads me into reason number two which is autonomy now when we first thought of uh, doing full-time RV, the first thing that come, came to mind was freedom, right? I think most people think freedom when they think of RVs. Um, but if you are constantly having to go to an RV park and, and plug in, uh, that to us wasn't freedom. We want to be out here on our public lands and really immerse ourselves into the nature around us and enjoy the peace and quiet. So we wanted no RV parks, no grid ties, complete independence. And that meant we had to judge whether purchasing a RV aligned with our personal needs and desires. And there are some excellent off-grid, off-road RVs out there. Uh, two that come to mind are the Black Series and the Explorer. And we, we've looked at both of those. Um, but the problems with those, uh, besides the high price point, is the water tank capacity for one. Um, so they only have about a 30 to a 50 gallon water tank capacity and maybe that sounds like a lot to people but we use uh, 35 gallons of water a week and we want to be able to spend two weeks on the public lands which is the stay limit so that means at least 70 gallons of water with us. Now maybe it's not too big of a problem throw a couple more gallons in the truck uh, when you go out but what if it's freezing temperatures out? Now you have a problem with, with that. So then it's like, okay, how do you add more water to the expensive RV that doesn't have room for you to add more water to? So those were some of the problems we kept running into and, and trying to find ways around. And with our cargo trailer, what we ended up doing is we put all the water inside and we adjusted the layout to accommodate for a 100 gallon water tank. Um, so that gave us flexibility uh, in order to give us the freedom. 
that means you need to understand the type of camping that you are going to be doing. And this leads me to uh, reason number three, and that was towability. And guys, this was a huge one for us. Towability was maybe one of the most important things for us. You need to be comfortable with what you're towing because um, that leads to confidence, which you need when you're towing a big rig down the road. And you need to understand what type of camping you're doing. So if you're just going to an RV park, you can go with whatever your truck can tow. You don't, you're not limited by the size or the length or the width or the height. Um, but if you're going to come out to our public lands and boondock and go really far off road in some rutted areas and up mountain switchbacks and tight turns and corners and small little spaces um, and over huge ruts and rocks, you need to consider how long is your trailer, how much does your trailer weigh, um, how good are the tires on the trailer? What's the suspension like on the trailer? And what's your ground clearance like? So let's break that down. Most RVs come with maybe a 17 inch tire that runs 80 to 100 PSI. You see it all the time, blowouts all over the place, right? That's on the freeway, on tarmac. And then you come down a, a dirt road, what do you think's gonna happen? This site that we're in right now, there's glass and metal and all sorts of stuff all over that I'm gonna have to spend time cleaning up because it's just really sad. Um, but I didn't worry about it backing in because I know these tires can go over that type of stuff. Suspension. I can't tell you how many times when I'm sitting out in the morning I hear and with my cup of coffee and I hear way off in the distance an RV coming because it's like an earthquake. It's dun 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 on these washboard roads, the RVs do not have suspension or they have very, very little suspension, except for the Black Series and the Explorer that I mentioned earlier. Um, so they are not designed to go off road and most cargo trailers aren't either. You know, they don't have suspension whatsoever on them. Uh, for us, we have independent suspension on all four tires. So the truck is actually the problem for us. It's really rough on washboard roads and the, I look back and the trailer is just gliding along, perfectly happy, never had anything like major fall in the trailer when we open the doors after we get to where we're going, usually just something I didn't secure properly, like a pot lid. Um, and then ground clearance. So most RVs, you're lucky if you're going to get like 10 inches of ground clearance, maybe 12 if you're really lucky. Um, and standard cargo trailers are even are worse, I think. They're like six to eight inches. Um, but our cargo trailer here has 19 inches of ground clearance, which is comparable to what you'd see in a Black Series or an Explorer. Now, those things, maybe for you, aren't necessary and you're just gonna, you know what? You're gonna take that big old fifth wheel down that road no matter what. And honestly, I've seen that. I've seen some like 40 foot fifth wheels in places uh, that I did not expect to see them. And good on them for getting it up there, but those RVs are put together with like staples and glue. So you gotta ask yourself, what's the longevity gonna be like in something like that? And the other consideration in towability is weight. So most RVs that we were looking at start around 6,000 to 9,000 as their base weight. That does not include water. If you have a 100 gallon water tank, you now have an additional 800 pounds that you're putting into the trailer. And most of these trailers only can carry about 1,000 to 2,000 pounds. So you're automatically taking half of your capacity away before you've even put in a toothbrush or your clothing or your bikes. So that was a big consideration for us is how much weight capacity do we have? And some of um, the trailers that we looked at had pretty, pretty decent, 2,500 uh, pounds. Um, Explorer actually has like, oh gosh, like 4,000 or more pounds, which is great because it's kind of based off of a cargo trailer build. Um, and our trailer here has 5,600 pounds. Now that's before we did the build, so you have to factor that into how much you can carry, but we probably still have a couple thousand pounds free even after our build and having 100 gallons of water on board.
And this leads us to the fourth reason of why we chose a cargo trailer over an RV, and that's the price to value ratio. So getting the most bang for your buck. Now, a lot of the RVs that we were looking at, and we were looking brand new, they start around forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and go upwards to about 100000 That's kind of like the range that we were looking in. And then you have to factor on top of that in order to do the type of camping that we want to do, we needed to modify some things and maybe invest about ten dollars to $20,000 more into it to make those changes that we had to make, which included tires, suspension, um, solar panels, the fridge, all the systems in place. So at that point, you're invested quite a bit into a depreciating asset. And we didn't take depreciation of a cargo trailer versus an RV into the main consideration when we did this. I'm sure neither of them are really that great. Um, but when you're already having to spend so much and then you're spending more to change it to what you need it to be, it started to not really make sense to us from a dollar perspective. And lastly, the fifth reason of why we went this direction is for when something breaks. Not if, when. Because whether you have an RV, a cargo trailer build, or a van build, stuff will break. Just how it is. And when that happens, um, if you're at an RV park, maybe not the biggest deal in the world. You probably are close to a city or you can get an RV technician to come out and actually fix it for you um, or help you. Um, but when you're out in the middle of public land in the desert and you're 40 minutes, an hour away from the nearest town um, that may or may not even have a mechanic, uh, that's kind of a big deal, you know. You need to be able to be self-reliant, and if something breaks, you need to be able to fix it, whether it's a water leak or whether it's something with uh, the axle on the trailer. And for, for us, I know how to fix everything on this because I built everything on it. I understand all the electric and the water lines because I did it. And that doesn't mean something could, won't crop up that I can't do myself, but I'm mu in a much better position to be able to figure it out than if I had an RV where everything is hidden from me and I wasn't involved in the build and design. That's gonna take a lot more investigation to figure out how to fix that. All right, folks, hopefully these five categories of how we decided to go with a cargo trailer over an RV uh, help you in your decision-making process, or maybe you've already made that decision and you've decided an RV or a cargo trailer build or a van build. Um, if that's the case, let us know down below why you chose one way or another. Everyone camps differently, everyone lives differently, everyone's needs are different. And if you're still kind of sitting on the fence between which direction you want to go and you've really been looking at uh, cargo trailer builds, um, I would highly recommend letting us know below and kind of what the catching point is for you, where you're sitting at. I've found that if you ask for help, lots of people are willing to give help. And I also highly recommend if you're just starting this process, go to a lot of RV dealerships, sit in the RVs, think about how you're gonna use it. Tell the uh, salesperson like, I'll come find you when I'm ready and just sit there and use it. And also if you're thinking of a cargo trailer, Go to a dealership, sit in a cargo trailer. I know it sounds a little weird. We taped everything off. Let me tell you, it's completely different when you're actually in the space so versus taping it off. You can actually feel what 128 square feet feels like empty and you can start moving around and see if that's really big enough for you, if that's really the way you want to go at all, or maybe you really just want to go with something that's already pre-built. Um, so uh, if you like this video, please give us a, a like and consider subscribing. Um, also, I'm starting to post uh, more of my blogs that I have on our own website onto uh, YouTube now because I've opened up the community tab for smaller channels like ours. So uh, subscribe and follow along. I'll start posting some more photos and blogs on there uh, throughout the week to supplement uh, the videos as well. And uh, until next time, guys, take it easy.
Peace.